They come. Oh my gosh, is it going to be a threesome? Oh, that's another name! At night, in front of the castle. What? Keep in mind, I haven't read those stories before. <sighs> I'm already stressed. I have to meditate today. Please remind me in the comment to meditate. Thank you. So we have this lovely person. I have never shared this true story with anyone. Oh gosh. Ooh, it's juicy for sure. Love juicy. I hope it's not too juicy. Oh, I love juicy. Years ago, when I was working in San Francisco, good for you, how was it? When I was there, some people warned me about the thief problems in the cars. Very gas city, from what I heard. When I was there, can we have some silence? When I was there, I didn't see really the gayness of the city, but I've heard it's a really good city for queer people. Okay, so that's, the, that's another name. So it would be Sophie and Alison. Alison and I rented a house in the hills overlooking the airport. The hill was steep enough and the architecture of our house careful enough that the hot tub in the backyard was completely private. Good to know. But I can see why it's gonna be juicy at some point if if a hot tub is involved. Alison and I spent a lot of time out there under the stars. Romantic. You think too? She had this whole gay... She... <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, okay? Yes, geisha may, made me laugh. And it's not sexual yet. She had this whole geisha routine where she used to dress in a robe and fetch me wine and a towel, sometimes a dainty snack. Lucky you. She massaged my shoulders as I relaxed in the hot water. Then she'd get in and we'd listen to music and watch the plane circle as they waited to land at SFO. Okay, so right now, I'm pretty sure you're gonna, you're gonna answer my questions after, but you didn't mention your relationship with Alison. So my question is, Alison and Sophie, what was the, the status between the two of you? Yeah, I'm just curious about how you would call that. Anyway, Alison's little brother, Kevin, came to town to make a presentation at one of the universities. That's cool. That's really cool. I think actually it was UC Berkeley, which wasn't terribly close to us. But we invited him to stay with us anyway. He could always borrow my car to get to Berkeley. God. Driving in San Francisco. Alison fetched him from the airport and they were both waiting for me when I got home from work. We sat in the backyard drinking beer and eating takeout Thai food as the sun went down. I love those late afternoon in California. They're the best. I remember Kevin liked Chuck Mangiones. Chuck Mangiones? I don't know how to pronounce the name. I'm sorry. <laughs> Children of Sanchez soundtrack. But it never heard Miles Davis' sketches of Spain, so we were listening to that. Kevin was boyish and cute. He had blonde hair instead of Alison's luxurious red curls, and his eyes were pale blue instead of green. But he had her direct gaze. He looked young for his age. He was adorable. The second I saw him, I wanted to go over and mess up his hair. Once it got dark, I took the cover off the hot tub. I don't know about you, I said but I could use a soak. I stripped down, matter of factly, and stepped naked into the tub, like always, lowering myself slowly into the hot water. Did I miss something? Because I don't remember you saying that when you were in the hot tub, you were naked. Come on, you two, I said. It feels great. I'm sure it feels great to be naked in the hot tub. The two of them silently stripped down, okay, and got into the hot tub. I hadn't turned on the outdoor lights, so the moonlight provided a bit of privacy. Alison had told me they were pretty open with each other. They com- Oh my gosh, is it going to be a threesome? They compared notes of their dating lives, and they both knew a lot of really dirty jokes. I figured they'd be comfortable in the hot tub. If not, they could say something. We were all adults. Okay. I like to keep the tub really hot. After a while, I felt myself getting parboiled. So I did like always. I lifted myself out of the water and sat on the edge of the tub, with my calves and feet dangling into the water. I waited for the night air to cool me down, then got back into the water. Oh, the best feeling where you're a little bit cold because you're wet and you're outside and you wait a little bit and then you go back. Oh, I love the feeling. When Alison and I were alone, sitting on the edge was a sort of invitation for playtime. I really need to understand your relationship status with Alison. Oh, 
don't look down. We took turns loving each other under the stars. Okay, so that's, there is definitely sex involved. It was a wonderfully romantic habit. I guess that's why when Kevin lifted himself up to sit on the edge, I didn't really stop to think about it. I just glided over, knelt in, knelt in front of him and took him between my lips. We all were silent for a few awkward minutes before Kevin said something about having to get up early for his conference the next day. He gathered up his clothes as we wished him good night. Alison and I stayed outside for another hour or two, but I suppose that's not part of, his of this story. Wow! I think I need a minute or two. Clearly it was juicy. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. From what I understand, there is no question there is no regret, there is nothing like that. It was just a raw memory shared with me. So thank you, first of all, for the trust. You, you didn't ask any questions, but I have questions for you. First, did you ever mention this story again, the three of you? Did you ever talk about it? Two, were you drunk or were you completely sober? Three, were Alison and you in a romantic relationship or is she just your roommate? And yeah, how is it today? Is it, is it weird? Is it something we don't mention? How weird is it to write to a sheer stranger? Yeah, I'm sure it is. That's also why I wanted to, to do it, you know? I think sometimes it's great to, to talk to strangers. It's in French? Oui. Ooh, let's translate it. I love your name. Your real name. I'm a French baby gay. Hi, welcome to our world. And I also struggle with the word lesbian. That's very normal, a lot of us are. And I'm very grateful to you for your videos. Thank you, I'm grateful for you as a human being. They touched me and helped me in my personal reflection. I'm really glad. I'm actually very, very happy to be able to help people. Like, I think it's really, really cool. What can I tell you about myself? I will start by saying that I was quite a tomboy in elementary school. Same. I don't like the word tomboy. A tomboy is a successful girl, right? I prefer the word tomboy, which... He... Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah, with the translation, just for you to understand. In French, we don't say tomboy, we say a mist boy. The, the, the literal translation is that. So that's why she said a mist boy is a successful girl, right? Anyway, uh, I prefer the word tomboy, which hints less disappointment into not being the perfect girl nor a real boy. In college, I was neither feminine nor too masculine, a neutral in between. I remember in camp being accused of being a lesbian. You see, already accused. Like what? I had touched the shoulder of a girl who was crying to comfort her, while other people before me had actually hurt her. I obviously answered that I was straight in an attempt to minimize the ostracism that resulted from these accusations. Kids, and especially teenagers, are so dumb. Oh, it makes me so angry. However, I remember sincerely asking myself the question. I was quite certain that I felt nothing for the person crying. While writing this, the image that comes to me are these women who in ancient Greece were hired to cry in a funeral procession. I never felt any attraction to a boy nor for a girl. I didn't understand my friends who showed each other photos of actors on their phone and found them attractive. I found this hobby very boring and stupid. <laughs> okay. I had a hard time understanding why humans were not all bisexual. <laughs> Fair. Uh, I have a theory on that. I didn't see why we could be more attracted to one gender than the other. That's a very interesting question. Then I tell you things in the order in which I became aware of them, which is quite different from the order in which I experienced them. In third grade, there was a girl in my Spanish class who draws. I spent a significant part of my Spanish lessons observing her. Did you have good grades in Spanish or not? That's very important. In second year, I went to Australia for two and a half months. That's so cool. I studied there. When I come back to France, I'm bored to death. I want to meet new people, discover people other than my classmates. One day at the CDI, <laughs> at the, let's say at the library, I heard people discussing string theory. I'm a fan of quantum mechanics and I boldly decided to join the conversation. 
Girl! The group of three girls in their second year of prep school. I became particularly friendly with one in particular called she takes the same bus as me, we talk a lot, she's impressed by my thinking despite our 5 years difference. But she's in prep school and very quickly she no longer has time for me. I then notice a girl my age who systematically sits in the first row of the bus I take. Who always has a large drawing bag and whom I finally recognize as the designer of my Spanish class. Woo! Out of boredom, one day, I gathered up my courage and went to sit next to her. I've never met anyone with whom I shared such a similarity of spirit. Spirit? Spirit. I feel like I met someone with exactly the same feelings, emotions, thoughts, just immersed in different circumstances. Circumstance, circumstances, whatever. At that time, I started, for very different reasons, a diary and I had whole pages of praise, of excitement about this friendship. In short, <laughs> became my best friend. It took me several months before realizing that I wanted to kiss her. When I become aware of this desire, I am really ashamed and I'm desperate because it seems to me totally impossible, unrealizable, even before I am certain that she is straight. I learned that she had a boyfriend. She shared with me the PDF of a very clearly straight erotic book. We can learn a lot from them, trust me. I had no hope from the start and I had no reason to have some, or maybe I had. On her messages, she calls me honey, darling, baby. Her mother tongue is English, hence my fluency in English. And her sweet words are really doing something to me. In prep school, I became friends with a guy. He's really nice, intellectually, he's responsive. I'm sorry if the translation is not totally correct. It's Google Translate. It's not me translating. Otherwise, it would be perfect, of course. Kidding. The whole class is convinced that we are dating. <sighs> Kids. One day, he kneels before me, at night, in front of the castle. What? What is from, coming from me? I'm extremely uncomfortable, especially since on his knees, he's barely a head shorter than me. <laughs> I take him by the arm, pick him up, and tell him that we will not date. A few months later, after two days without sleeping and thinking, I decided to kiss him. I will not say anything to you. Sophie number five. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what that look means. Okay, sex is from the beginning really tricky, difficult. I get very attached to him. A year and a half later, he dumped me. I didn't really see it coming. At first, he doesn't give me an explanation. Then he tells me that in fact, he's an ace. I don't know what you mean by A-C-E. After spending a month crying, I have a few days of anger. Yeah, then I get better. I'm going to a friend's New Year's party. A girl I had already seen once, a certain <laughs> joins us and when she enters the room, I only want to make her laugh. I spend the evening with her. She's the only one that interests me. Crush, crush, crush. We spend a wonderful time dancing together. The next day, I was woken up by a terrible dream in which I kissed and then ran away. This dream knocked me out. I spent the next day completely dissociated in a total fog. After several weeks, I decided to go through my entire life in anti-chronological, then chronological order and try to understand what is happening to me. I then remembered that I was still very much in love with C. Who is C? I realized that my boyfriend was very nice, but that I was not at all attracted to him. I also realized that I was very clearly in love with... Oh, that's another name! <gasps> I'm lost. I mean, I remember a scene in which I'm laying down next to her on the grass next to the Louvre. Romantic. And there is so much tension between us. And I felt guilty joy upon learning that she had broken up with her boyfriend. It's also extremely hurtful to have realized that in college, I was open to the idea of being attracted to women. But then as I grew up, I internalized that it was impossible and shameful. It's also very odd to think that people randomly call out a truth about me that I discovered years later. After several months of discovering who I am and the queer community, I decided to invite 
to lunch. I acted extremely weird, <laughs> talking only about queer subjects, icons. Well, I came out having lost all hope of being in a relationship with her, given how weird I was. But I am sure of at least one thing. She isn't straight, and it's such a relief compared to being in love with knowing she's straight. It feels really different being rejected because the person is straight or just because she doesn't like me this way. I gathered up my courage again and at the beginning of March I went to the mutinary spin dating. So wait, the person that you were in love with told you no? Okay, well, thank you so much for telling me your story. You didn't really explain what happened after the, the lunch, but first I'm really proud of you for being brave enough to invite someone you are in love with to a lunch and even if you think you acted weirdly, which is normal, pressure makes us weird, it's really really brave and you can always use this experience to find some strength. It's great, you actually had really nice experiences. Of course, falling in love with a straight woman isn't the best experience, but you can have a better gay doll, okay? Wow, it's a lot. I hope it helped you in any way to just share that with other people. And it's so cool, the, the speed dating thing, that's so cool. Did, did you find anyone? Did you meet anyone that you actually liked? Even if it wasn't for life or in a romantic way, maybe you just met someone as a friend. But yeah, once again, thank you so much for, for writing your story to me. And tell me, tell me about the speed dating. Was it just queer or was it mixed? I don't know kind of curious. And how was Australia? Did you explore the queer Australian culture? That's, that would be also good to know. Anyway, 